Last time I told you how a concave shape can converge a beam of parallel light and bring it to a focus at a single point. We also saw that shape is supposed to be a parabola. Parabolas are a little bit complicated, but you know what is not all that complicated? That's a sphere or a circle. So a paraboloid, if you take a very tiny section of a paraboloid, it becomes a it becomes spherical. That's exactly what we told you last time. And so today we're going to deal with this spherical concave mirrors. All right. Is I'm going to start with a center over here. This is going to be the center of my sphere. And here is my sphere. I'm going to start going that. That's the entire sphere. Now I don't want the entire sphere. I want just a part of the sphere. And there we have it. So we now have a spherical part, a part which is a, uh, something which is a part of a sphere. And all I need to do now is silver this guy. This part, this center of that sphere, is what we're going to call as pole. I'm going to draw a line that passes through the pole and the center of curvature. I'm going to call this as the principal axis. And do you know why I love spherical surfaces? The reason I love them is because it's very easy to draw normals. See, usually if you want to draw a normal to a curve, say for example, I told you I want to draw a normal at this point, if I told you that, Usually it would be a little bit of a pain in the neck because we'll first have to draw a tangent and then draw a perpendicular to that tangent. But when it comes to spheres, we don't have to do that because spheres have an amazing property. And that property is that all the normal to every point on the sphere passes through the center of that sphere or the center of curvature. Therefore, if I want to draw a normal at this point, all I have to do is draw it from the center. Voila, there I have it. The job that we have over here is to find out, see we already saw last time that if we shoot, uh, if we shoot parallel beam of light onto a concave surface and if that surface is almost a parabola, which, you know, it's not a perfect parabola, but if we shoot it, then we found out that after reflection they're going to converge at a particular point and we call that point as focus. So let's draw that. To draw that first, I would need some, uh, let's see, need some normals. So here is normal number one. And now I can see the angle of incidence over here. Here is my angle of incidence I. And now I need to take this ray and reflect it. I'm going to use blue for reflection. I'm going to reflect it back. And I have to make sure that the angle is exactly the same. Uh, not really exactly over here. Maybe that looks pretty good. Okay, and the same thing is going to happen. Okay, the question now which I have is what is this distance? Okay, so call it as focal length. And that makes a lot of sense. It's just the length of, uh, it's just the length of the focus. I mean, how far the rays of light are going to get focused from the mirror, from the pole, piece pole, the center of the mirror. Okay, and that's what I want to figure out today. How far does it get, does it get focused? And what that thing might depend upon is how much curvature we have. So it might depend upon the radius of curvature. This radius, it must have something to do with the radius. I mean, you can imagine as the radius became bigger and bigger and bigger, the, the mirror becomes more and more flat and you would expect this point of focus to shift towards the right. right? So it's reasonable to think that that distance depends on the radius of curvature. I want to find out what is the relationship between R and the focal length and we're going to call F for the focal length. Uh, how do I do that? Well actually it turns out it's very simple. It's all in the angles, it's all in the geometry. Well if this angle is I, this angle is going to be I because of the rules of reflection. And that makes this angle I, can you see why? Because alternate interior angles, look at this. Similarly, look at this angle. It's all about the angles, people. If you look at this angle, that's the same as this total angle over here. And that total angle is 2i. Okay? Now we're going to use trigonometry. If I'm going to call this point as m, then we can use simple trigonometry. And if you don't like trigonometry, you know what we can do? We can actually, we can actually do this. See, I'm going to tell you that. If the arc length is s, 
and this angle is theta and if this radius is r then do you know what is the connection between s r and theta well the connection is s equals r theta or theta equals s divided by r you could ask me where did we get this from and i would tell you this is the definition of theta this is how we define theta okay so that's from the definition we define theta and theta has to be in radians okay not degrees you might be familiar with degrees but so theta is defined as the ratio of the arc length divided by the radius and what we can do now is we can invoke that over here so we can say over here 2i so i'm running out of space over here so let me just draw it over here okay i'm just gonna write that over here so it's a very simple proof see i can say 2i over here that is the angle 2i must be equal to arc length mp there is the arc length divided by this distance which is just the focal length f but guess what i is i can be written as the arc length so i can write this is two times arc length divided by pc which is just the radius of curvature r and therefore this is mp divided by f and there we have it we can see from this 2 by r equals 1 over f or this tells us that f equals r divided by 2 and that's the relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature so for example if the radius of curvature is 10 centimeters this tells us that the focal length must be at 5 centimeters and i think that's quite intuitive over here because the focal length is making the same arc length compared to the radius however look at the angle the angle is twice so if theta is equal to s by r so that's what we had over here see theta is equal to s by r if you want the same arc length over here notice the arc length is the same but you want twice the angle then you need to decrease this by half and that decrease this by two you want to make this half that's exactly what happens over here and that's why focal length turns out to be half of the radius of curvature all right so we're going to use this in the future so see you next time take care